One day garage floor companies are misleading you about epoxy garage floors, and I'm gonna show you how they're wrong. They will always tell you about how bad epoxy is. They say poly is four times stronger than epoxy, that epoxy turns yellow in sunlight, and then hot tires peel it off of the concrete. These are all the main talking points for epoxy garage floor companies, and I'm gonna go through these point by point so that you can make a decision about which way is better. Okay, first, here's a little background about the different competing garage floor systems. When we first started 20 years ago, we would do an epoxy primer with a full broadcast of flakes. We would let that cure overnight, and then we'd come back and clean the flakes, then we'd top coat that with epoxy. The problem with this system is that the clear epoxy was exposed to UV light, and eventually it would turn an amber color. It wasn't a big deal for floors that were brown, people hardly ever noticed it actually, but it was really obvious on gray floors. We would always come back a third day to apply a urethane top coat, and the idea was that urethane would slow down the ambering process, but in the long run, it was still a problem. And then once professional garage floors grew in popularity, DIY stores brought out a DIY garage floor system. The DIY system is the same process as the original, but it's meant for DIYers. The materials are water-based, which means they're cheaper and easier to use, but they're also thin and they don't hold up for very long. They still have issues with the top coat turning an amber color, but they also have the added problem of hot tires pulling them off of the concrete. This issue only really affects DIY water-based kits. We've never had this happen on any of our professional floors. These kits can be good for homeowners that don't mind if the floor isn't perfect. They're also used to cover an ugly garage floor when a homeowner is trying to sell their house. A lot of painters will buy these kits and attempt to do garages with them, but no legitimate garage flooring business would ever use this type of material. Hey, my name is Tim with Decorative Concrete of Virginia. If you're enjoying this video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. That brings us to the third system, the polyaspartic floor. Everyone knew the amber epoxy was a problem, but people were willing to deal with it because that was all that was available. But the industry innovated and they eventually came up with a UV-stable polyaspartic urethane top coat. This is a similar system to what we did before. We're still doing the epoxy primer. We also swapped out the traditional epoxy primer for moisture vapor barrier epoxy. Moisture can cause coatings to develop bubbles over time, and the vapor barrier epoxy prevents that from happening. So we would do the new vapor barrier epoxy, and we would broadcast flakes into it, and then we would clean the flakes and top coat it with a polyaspartic coating. This was great for three reasons. Number one, we no longer have to worry about moisture vapor coming through the concrete. Since the epoxy is only used under the flakes, we also don't have to worry about it turning an amber color anymore. Then number three, we only need to use one top coat since our polyaspartic urethane is UV stable. So this actually saved us a whole day and an extra trip to the job site. We've been installing this new system for about 10 years now. We haven't really had any problems with it. But in the past three or four years, the garage floor industry has exploded. And just like any industry, people are always trying to find an edge on their competition. Which brings me to the fourth type of garage floor system, the one day floor system. A one day garage floor has the exact same top coat that I mentioned before, which is a polyaspartic top coat. The only difference is in the primer. One day companies will use a polyurea or a polyaspartic coating as a primer because it will dry in a couple of hours and that allows them to prime and apply the flakes to a floor before lunch. Then they'll let that cure for two hours and they'll come back after lunch and put on a top coat. The biggest benefit to this system is that the entire job can be done in one day. You're thinking about starting a decorative concrete coating business. I just want to let you know that I've created online courses that will teach you literally everything you need to know. I've also made a spreadsheet that I'm giving away that will help you calculate how much material you might need for a job, how much you're gonna spend, and how much you can make on any given project. If you want more information about that, I'll leave it in the first link in the description down below. Okay, I wanted to explain the four types of systems to you before I explain how one day floor companies are misleading you. If you see any of the one day floor ads for epoxy garage floors, you'll see some variation of the following complaints. The ads will say that epoxy turns amber, it'll claim that hot tires peel the epoxy off the floor, and their biggest thing is that they say poly is four times stronger than epoxy. So the question is, does epoxy amber? The answer is obviously yes, which is why the entire professional industry switched over to using a polyaspartic top coat. Number two, do hot tires hurt epoxy? Again, the answer is yes. Water-based epoxy DIY kits get destroyed by hot tires, but this was never an issue with professional high solid systems. This is especially relevant because one day floor companies and two day floor companies are using the same polyaspartic top coat and hot tires don't hurt either of them. And the third marketing pitch is that poly is four times stronger than epoxy. That's just a confusing statement. Yes, it might be four times more flexible than epoxy, but why does it matter since the epoxy is completely buried under flakes and then we're all using the same polyaspartic top coat. Poly coatings are not four times stronger than epoxy when it comes to holding down moisture vapor though. Non-vapor barrier coatings only hold down three pounds of pressure, but vapor barrier epoxy 
typically holds down between 10 and 20 pounds of pressure. We've been installing garage floors for 20 years now, and in the past 10 years, we've been using an epoxy vapor barrier primer with a polyspartic top coat, and we haven't had any major failures in that time. Durability for homeowners is literally a non-issue. I actually had a one day flooring installer make a comment on one of my videos the other day, and it's particularly relevant here. In a moment of candor, he admitted exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Epoxy is strong, doesn't mean poly isn't stronger. Does the average homeowner need that? Not necessarily, but it still sells. And that's my point here is that it's all one big sales pitch to scare you away from competitors. The fact of the matter is that there are a lot of different coatings for a bunch of different circumstances. If you're in a hurry and you do a vapor test and you know moisture is not an issue, then a one day floor might be a good option. We actually offer one day floors for very specific scenarios. Fast Cure primers aren't some unique product that are only available to a few people. The problem is that even with testing, you can't know for sure that moisture is not an issue because the amount of moisture passing through the concrete can change over time. I'm not telling you that because it's my opinion. If you read the instructions for most of these floor primers, it will usually tell you the same thing, which is that a slab on grade requires a moisture barrier. There's a reason they require that. It's important for you to know this if you take a moisture test of your concrete. Just because it measures low now, doesn't mean it won't measure higher tomorrow or next month or next year. And when it does rise, you're gonna have issues like this. Eventually, fast cure primers will catch up and someone will come out with a coating that can hold down moisture. But until then, unless you're just in a hurry and you can't wait one extra day, I don't really see much of an advantage to switching to polyurea primers. If you're thinking about doing a garage floor and you've picked out a one day garage floor company and you're thinking about using them, I'm not telling you not to use them. It is admittedly a rare case to have a moisture issue on a garage floor. So if you found a contractor that you, that you trust and they have a proven track record of doing a good job, then by all means, you should use them. I'm just saying for me, personally, I do not think that the benefits of doing a one day floor system outweigh the risks that come along with it. And the only reason I made this video was to address all the marketing that demonizes the entire epoxy industry. If you want to learn more about epoxy garage floor coatings, I made a playlist right here. This is going to cover the difference between DIY and pro kits. It also is going to show you the difference between one and two day floors. So be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.